Number 6. Jennifer Pan In 2010, three men made their way into the Pan residence in Unionville, Markham, Ontario, home to Vietnamese immigrants Bic Ha Pan, Hue Han Pan, and their 24-year-old daughter, Jennifer. On November 8, the intruders entered through the unlocked front door, demanded all the money in the house, then took Bic and Han to the basement and shot them multiple times. Bic died at the scene and Han was left in critical condition but ultimately survived. Jennifer was the one who placed the 911 call and she'd later tell officers that after the intruders had tied her up, she'd managed to free her hands and reach for the phone. She was questioned by the police on the night of the murder. As the investigation progressed, there were multiple inconsistencies that detectives had remarked through Jennifer's facade of grief and tearful distress. Among the major irregularities in the violent home invasion was a lack of forced entry and the fact that Jennifer hadn't been blindfolded or taken to the basement and left alive as a potential witness. Jennifer was arrested on November the 22nd during her third police interview in which she also revealed the controlling environment under which she lived at home. Under Canadian law, officers are allowed to lie to the suspects they're questioning in order to obtain evidence. The interrogating officer, William Goetz, falsely told Jennifer that the police had special software that could detect untruths in statements. Goetz used the read interrogation technique of creating a high-pressure environment for the interviewee, followed by sympathy and offers of understanding and help. Jennifer eventually admitted to having hired the intruders, but claimed that she'd contracted them to execute her and not her parents. A video with portions of Jennifer's police interviews uploaded to the YouTube channel JCS Criminal Psychology has been viewed over 35 million times. If you could make this decision over, you would change it. Okay? You would change it. Right? Of course. If I knew who was going to get hurt, of course okay. I would. Jen, you knew who was going to get hurt. That's the whole issue here. Okay, that's the whole issue here. You gave them the plan for your parents, right? That's all I need to hear. No. Jen, you did. No, and this is not going to go anywhere because I wanted them to kill me. Tell me what happened. I told you what happened. Okay, all of it. Okay. All you have to do is here is tell me right now that Bill, yes, I made a mistake. Bill, yes, I made a mistake. This plan was for my parents. It ultimately emerged that Jennifer had conspired with her boyfriend, Daniel Chi Kwon Wong, to hire professional hitmen to kill her parents. They'd calculated that Jennifer stood to inherit $500,000 from their deaths, and it was she who'd left the door open for the intruders. Jennifer also sought revenge on Bic and Han for their tiger parenting, which had reportedly stressed academic, athletic, and artistic achievements, thus depriving her of any social life into her early 20s. It's unclear who acted as the trigger man in the shooting. The others involved were named as David Milverganum, who was confirmed to have entered the house, Lenford Roy Crawford and Eric Sean Carty. Pan, Wong, Milverganum, and Crawford were all convicted and given life sentences, with at least 25 years served, while Carty pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit murder and was sentenced to 18 years. Number 5. Natalie Mayer The body of 71-year-old Veronica Corstaphine was found in her bed by authorities in Tasmania on October the 29th of 2019. The elderly woman had been killed weeks prior to the body's discovery, and the main suspect was her daughter, Natalie Mayer, aged 48. She hadn't lived with her mother since her late teens, but had moved with Corstaphin in Launceston about two months before her death while facing financial difficulties. Investigators and forensic experts determined that Mayer had fatally smothered her mother with a pillow on October the 3rd. Within days, she used her credit card to purchase a flight from Launceston to Perth. She then transferred the funds in Corstaphin's account, about $12,000, to her own and fled Tasmania with the woman's computer tablet, phone, and jewelry. While a factor, money wasn't believed to have been the main motive behind the killing. Mayer had reportedly resented her mother since her teens when her parents separated. Once they were again under the same roof, Corstaphin began complaining about Mayer's excessive drinking and pressed her to change her lifestyle. 
may have flew into a fit of rage after finding messages on her mother's phone in which she'd expressed concerns regarding her behavior to others. It's believed that she then, possibly under the influence of alcohol, went to Corstefin's bedroom and suffocated her. Following her arrest and during her criminal trial, Maya maintained her innocence, but in November of 2021, the jury returned a unanimous guilty verdict at Launceston Supreme Court. Maya was sentenced to 23 years in prison with parole available after 13 years served. Number four, Isabella Guzman. In 2020, a video entitled Sweet But Psycho went viral on TikTok, showing a young woman smiling in court while she was facing trial for the brutal murder of her mother. Countless users on the social media platform, along with others in Twitter as well, remarked the contrast between Isabella Guzman's attractive appearance and the horrific crime of which she stood accused. They also noted the lack of remorse she displayed during her legal proceedings, which dated back to 2013. In August of that year, Guzman had butchered her mother, 47-year-old Yun Mi Hoi, at their home in Aurora, Colorado. Tensions had been reported in the household leading up to the woman's death and Guzman was allegedly on the verge of being kicked out of the house. She had threatened violence against her mother with part of her rage, reportedly being directed at the woman's new husband, Ryan Hoi, whom she felt was trying to replace her biological father, Robert. Yun Mi had become so fearful of 18-year-old Guzman that she'd asked the latter to talk with her, which he did on August the 28th. Robert felt that he'd gotten through to his daughter, later reporting that she seemed calm and understanding. Roughly three hours later, however, Hoi heard Yun Mi screaming from an upstairs bathroom. As he went to check on her, Hoi caught a glimpse of Guzman in the bathroom before she shut the door and locked it. He then noticed blood flowing underneath the door and went downstairs to call 911. Upon his return, Hoy saw Guzman standing in the bathroom doorway holding a knife. She said nothing and fled the scene as the man fruitlessly tried to revive his wife. Responding officers found Yun Mi's naked body covered in stab wounds and a bloodied baseball bat beside her. An autopsy subsequently revealed that Guzman had stabbed her 151 times and repeatedly struck her with the bat. The team was arrested the day after the attack and was ultimately found not guilty by reason of insanity. It was determined that she suffered from paranoid schizophrenia. Guzman claimed to have heard voices that told her to kill her mother, whom she believed was someone named Cecilia, in order to save the world. The teenager was sent to the Colorado Mental Health Institute at Pueblo, where she was still receiving treatment at the time of the viral video circulation. Number three, Mary White. On August the 5th of 2018, Acclaimed Australian paleobotanist Mary Elizabeth White was found dead in her room at a New South Wales Southern Highlands nursing home. Throughout her career, White had received a number of distinctions, was awarded with honorary doctorates from four universities, and in 2009 was named a member of the Order of Australia. In the incident's aftermath, it was determined that the 92-year-old woman's death had been caused by drugs, which hadn't been administered by the nursing home's staff. Investigators found that Barbara Eckersley, White's daughter, had put substances commonly known as green dream drugs in her mother's soup. The sedatives of the barbiturate class are often used by veterinarians to euthanize animals and Eckersley had had them since her time as a wildlife caregiver in Canberra, roughly two decades prior. The woman admitted to drugging her mother but denied having done so with the intention of killing her. At the time, Eckersley was dealing with severe depression in connection to her mother's health. During her trial, she recounted how White had become immensely distraught as she was aware her mental faculties, afflicted by the dementia, were fading. Eckersley felt that the care facility wasn't doing enough to soothe her mother's suffering and sought to help her by administering the barbiturates that ultimately caused her death. She was initially charged with murder but eventually found guilty of the lesser charge of manslaughter. A judge determined that Eckersley's moral culpability was low because of her severe depression. She avoided jail time and was sentenced to a two-year community corrections order with the condition that she undergo mental health treatment. Today's topic was requested by Nidia Pinya. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number two, Gabriela Pereiro. In July of 2018, Florida woman Gabriela Pereiro was at the Fort Lauderdale home of her mother 85-year-old Luisa, of whom she'd allegedly been taking care. 
According to a report by local authorities, Pereiro had learned during the interaction with her mother that she wouldn't get any of her inheritance, which was to be shared among her siblings. Pereiro would later admit in her police interviews that she was overtaken by rage and told her mother, you destroyed my life, so I'm going to destroy you. The 53-year-old ransacked Luisa's condo and smashed picture frames before attacking her. Pereiro pushed her mother to the floor and forcefully yanked on her arms, ripping her skin off. She then grabbed the elderly woman's neck with both hands and began to squeeze. In the attack's aftermath, Pereiro cleaned Luisa up, placed her in a bed and called 911. She told responding officers that she didn't want her mother to die. Luisa spent a day in a coma at Broward Health Medical Center before succumbing to her injuries. Pereiro was charged with premeditated murder and aggravated battery on a person 65 years of age or older. Number 1. Alexis Van Dusen Michigan woman Alexis Van Dusen, aged 21, was taken into custody by police in Kalamazoo after attempting to kill her mother in a methamphetamine-fueled attack. Van Dusen tried to set 51-year-old Buffy McBride on fire with rubbing alcohol prior to stabbing her multiple times with a pocket knife on February the 25th of 2022. As reported by McBride's daughter-in-law and other sources, the woman had tried to help Van Dusen, who was distraught and banging on neighbors' doors. McBride then became the focus of her aggression and was forced to fight for her life. She survived Van Dusen's onslaught and was hospitalized with multiple injuries. In an interview with Fox 10, after her release from the hospital, McBride addressed Van Dusen to say that she loved her and wished her the best. Regarding the attack, she added, that wasn't my daughter. Van Dusen was held on a $200,000 bond on charges of attempted murder and unlawful imprisonment. In early March, she made her first court appearance, during the course of which a judge told her that the crimes of which she stood accused carried a potential life prison sentence. Thanks for watching. Would you rather spend a night in a cell with a serial killer or move back with your parents for a year? Let us know in the comments section below.